Now, in this lesson, we are going to look at uh, problems in uniform circular motion. And we are going to look at one specific example found in, on page 52 of your course. You get an example where we are looking at a situation of someone swinging water in a bucket in a vertical circle. We want to investigate what conditions must be fulfilled for this water not to pour out of the bucket when the bucket is the, the topmost part of the circle. So let's get right into it and see what condition must be fulfilled in terms of the centripetal acceleration of the object. So let's draw a diagram of that situation. And here we've got our diagram. So on our simple diagram, this is the surface of the water in the bucket. The bucket is upside down. It is at the topmost part of this circle. The yellow line indicates the radius of the circular path R. Well, this is the surface of the water. So all this is the water. And remember, the water has got mass M. It is the water which is moving in a circular path. So you want to see what conditions must be fulfilled for this water not to pour out. So when we write M here, it is not the mass of the bucket, but the mass of the water in the bucket. At this point, we want to find out what are the forces which are acting on the water. There are two forces which are acting on the water. Now, what are they? One of them is the weight of the water which acts vertically downwards. That mg and the other one is the reaction on the water by the inner surface of the bucket at the bottom of the bucket we're going to call that one r so the reaction force on the water by the bucket which acts vertically downwards for this case because the bucket is upside down the bottom of the bucket is up there so the water inside is being pushed downwards by the surface of the water pardon me, by the surface of the bucket. So R and Mg are pointing downwards. They are pointing towards the center of the circular path. Remember this bucket is moving in the circular path with a constant speed V. So these two forces, R and Mg, provide the centripetal force. So we are going to say here that the centripetal force, F centripetal, is provided by the the r plus the weight of the water this is the normal reaction it is the force exerted on the water by the bucket downwards now we remember also that centripetal force is given by the equation mv squared over r this is the mass of the water this is the speed with which the water is moving along the circular path and this is the radius of that circular path so in in the place of fc i'm going to have m v squared over r is equal to r plus mg now in order for you to understand what i'm doing i'm going to start with r plus mg is equals to m v squared over r because i want to make r to be the subject so i'm going to subtract mg from both sides of the equation to remain with r being equal to m v squared over r minus mg and here we will note that the condition that must be satisfied for the water not to pour out is that r must be greater than zero there must be contact between the bottom of the bucket and the water that makes sure that the bottom of the bucket is exerting a force on the water so for that to be the case that force must be greater than zero but that force is mv squared minus mg so in the place of r, we are going to have mv squared over r minus mg 
being greater than 0. Now let's see what happens here. So let's create some more space. So over here, I'm going to move or add mg to both sides of this inequality sign. So I'm going to add mg, which means it will cancel with this one. And whatever I add to 0 becomes just mg. So you're going to have m v squared. When I add mg to this side, it disappears and it comes to the other side. Or you can simply say, take minus mg across this inequality sign and it goes to the other side. And you're going to end up with this. But what is this? This is centripetal force. mv squared over r is centripetal force. And we are saying the centripetal force must be greater than the weight of the water. This is one way of stating this condition. The centripetal force must be greater than the weight of the water in the bucket. For that water not to pour out, this condition must be fulfilled. So let's say that is the first condition. Now let's go on and go back to this equation here, which is m v squared over r is greater than mg. I want to cancel out the m's so that I remain with v squared over r is greater than g. What is v squared over r? You will recall this is an equation that is used to calculate centripetal acceleration. So you're going to say acceleration centripetal must be greater than the acceleration due to gravity. Again, this is the same condition, but this time in terms of centripetal acceleration. We know that the centripetal acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. So that condition has to be fulfilled. Your centripetal acceleration must be greater than 10 meters per second squared. Now let's proceed because we've not yet come to the end. I want to express this condition in terms of the speed with which you swing that bucket. So at this particular point, I'm going to multiply both sides by r. And when I do that, I will get v squared is greater than rg. And let's find the square root on both sides. I'm going to have square root, square root. And I end up with the condition that the speed must be greater than the square root of rg. I like this condition because it gives me this idea that the speed independent of the mass of the water that we have. It does not matter the quantity of the water that you have in the bucket, whether it is a large amount of water or a small amount of water. That speed is independent of that mass of the water. So this last condition here is good to, to investigate because it tells us that the speed must be greater than the square root of rg. What is r? r is the radius of the circular path and g is the acceleration due to gravity. So it is this last condition that is very, very important because it finds application in so many other situations. Like we will see in uh, examples such as looping the loop and maybe cars moving around, banked trucks and all that. Or vehicles moving over a Hamburg bridge. Those are the examples we are going to look in our next lesson. So in my next lesson, I will talk about looping the loop. And at this point, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel if you've not already done so, because by doing that, I'll have access to your email. And every time I release a new video on a particular lesson, you will get it in your email and you'll get to know what is it that I'm teaching about. So go right ahead and subscribe and I will see you in the next lesson where I will talk about 
looping the loop.